I, I love parkour and I'm so passionate about it and that's why I do it. I don't do it for the money, I don't do it for the attention on Instagram or stuff. I do it because I, I love parkour and I do the movements that make me happy. I yeah. felt like I could have almost went to the second step. I completely agree. But I think I would just bounce off it savagely. Even if you had an optimal side flip roll? If I had the best side flip roll, I could probably make a second one, but yeah. at the moment with my knees, I just don't know if I would cross. Yeah, yeah. Understandable. Understandable. I'll try and stick this one. See how it goes. I just want to reach my max potential and not worry about what level other people are at, and that's really all I'm, I'm focused on. Yep. That's it. Yeah. Shit. That felt good, yeah. Oh, you got that. Yeah, yeah. That was good prep. <laughs> yeah. Almost ribbed it. Yeah. That old chestnut. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh my god, Phil, what the, what the frick did you just do? Jeez. Okay, no, it's not too big. Doesn't matter. It's not too big. Forget I said that. Yeah, that straight in the splat would be gangster, wouldn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, front out or something. Like my style, I would describe as um, almost like rep still failure. So I'll try like the same line maybe for two or three hours and just try and get it down to what I would say is perfection. So I'd say I'm quite a perfectionist in the way that I want to look back at the clips and be 100% happy with the outcome. Nah, it's not gonna work. As if? It's too hard. Let me see the prep. So hot okay, I'm in. Oh. The, the part that puts you off the most is this is like so slippy so sometimes you, when I'm landing I just the traction's just like so like I don't feel like I'll be able to push off and make it I seem to get that Travis shout out to Travis I need to hit the G spot My hands like starting to like swell up a little bit because I punched the sign too hard. Travis is rubbing off on me. One success. Nah, it's still shitty though. You, you stuck it. You I stuck, stuck it. Better, Today's challenge is a perfect example of what my style would be. Something that's like quite hard to connect, quite complex, but at the same time it's actually simple. Yeah. Let's go! Jeez. So it could just be two moves, but the connection could be something that you just need to get perfect. So I just go and go and go and go and go until the success. In the long run, it's going to make you way better of an athlete. WFPF delivering a certification for parkour teaching. WFPF reached out to me, it would have been last year, about a potential competition. I spoke to Robbie and then had a call about the USA Parkour Cup, which he invited me out to be a judge at. And yeah, we just seemed to bounce off each other's energy really, really, really well. He approached me with this opportunity to come out to the Philippines and deliver this certification, and I couldn't be more grateful. Bro, are you parkour? Dumb. Are you fucking dumb?
Yeah, so we're trying to film this interview. We're in like a private function room. We asked for the music off, but they keep turning it off, on, off, on, off, on. It's like, bro, it's not that hard to just keep the music off for 20 minutes. Uh, George is here because obviously he's a beast, is not just as a practitioner of the sport, but as an ambassador of the sport. It's kind of rare to find somebody that's that skilled, talented, and like mentally trying to be the best there is, but also able to bounce around with people that don't have that necessarily ability, mentally or physically yet. Them stairs are like so big this way. The infrastructure they have here in the Philippines is like crazy good. Like the community feels really strong. Yeah, they have like a coach, they have people in all different roles it's like a huge community and they seem to know each other really well and be really close and disrespect that um yeah the community vibes are, are really 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 strong what yeah then with the court you get to here cool. and you can just spin yeah. and then say okay if it's going to go the way and it's going to branch out into all these big things, like people talk about it wanting it to be in the Olympics and stuff, like this is how it's going to have to move forward. There's going to have to be national teams with coaches just like there is here. No, so we've actually bought like the equipment that's here is good for teaching. Like yeah. there's different levels of everything. So yeah. 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 Common misconceptions in parkour and many sports alike is that you need to be an amazing athlete to be a coach. That's not true. Good. It doesn't matter, you can be the best athlete and be not the greatest coach, vice versa. You can be an average or sub-average athlete, but be the best coach in the world. So that's something people really need to remember. Uh, really excited to have you guys all here. Um, yeah, it's a big moment. We've been working with Al uh, for a few years, trying to make this happen, but with uh, COVID and things, it wasn't possible. So super excited to finally do that and um, really looking forward to this experience with you guys. Not that good in my movement, but I'm surely I'm good at sharing the movement with other people. Awesome. Yeah. And I also did coaching on visual impairment. Oh, wow. So. My goal for this is to learn and hopefully help progress uh, the parkour community and help foster these boys, the national team. <laughs> Feel that? We're gonna need that big time for later for things like the yeah, yeah, and yeah. stuff. So we've been here for two nights now. I've totaled like six hours, seven hours sleep in two nights. I think I got about three hours last night. Unfortunately, I fell asleep at like 10 p.m. and my body must have thought I was going for a nap. So I woke up after 15 minutes, then awake till about three or four. So yeah. So we're starting with the absolute basic introduction to parkour, so the most simple movements. So it would be the likes of even how to run properly, how to land properly, how to roll, how to absorb any impact, and some vaulting. All right. Now, not, yep. now that we know that, we're gonna try to add a spin yeah, after yeah. we turn. I've never done this. <laughs> yeah, me too. Oh. Yeah. Lost the glasses. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Did it do? But it looks like you're gonna do a, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I wish. I wish. For me, the this certification is so much more useful than anything I've ever done in the past because this is the new school things that kids and people coming into the sport as the sport goes this is what we need these are the kind of progressions and skills that we need to teach for the sport to grow you're a natural honestly you're a natural you've never done this but i've never done this before i've never done a reverse fold before guys i'm the one who teach yeah he taught me i'm the one who trained george pk yeah <laughs> thanks bro thanks bro <laughs> See, bro. Yeah, it was good. It was good. The explanation oh, was good. This certification can cater to the highest level athlete or, yeah, someone who's just starting parkour, just getting into it, right up to the level of wants to compete internationally on a world level. 
So it, le it levels up, it scales up very, very, very nicely. Give it the culture. Don't even know if I'm going to be able to train, to be honest. <sighs> Sick of this fucking shit, like one. Back board, eh? Yeah. And still, even still, it just feels strange. So for me, I've been pretty lucky up until this point with injuries in parkour, but now I've been experiencing some pretty bad knee problems. So some um, jumper's knee, tendonitis sort of things. But before that, I was, I've been really lucky. Um, just some sprains and some bad bruises and stuff. For me, if I'm injured, um, I'm, I'm just resting and rehab and thinking about when I can move again next. Just too close to that rock. Kills me not being able to train, but we all go through them stages and we just have to focus on being able to get healthy again. So my current injury is jumper's knee slash tendonitis. Um, I'm actually going to see knee specialist physio um, when I go home to Northern Ireland. So hopefully, fingers crossed, can get something that's really going to help. I don't want to keep just having videos made about me, about me complaining that I can't train though. I know I'm trying, but I'm just, I'm just so upset and demotivated by it. Like, my life has revolved around parkour, which I've realized over the last couple of months maybe isn't the most healthy thing to put all your eggs in one basket. So now I'm trying to focus on things that I can enjoy as well as just parkour. You need to be able to still be happy and not put all your happiness just in um, the one thing that you love. Shitty man, that's not it, that's shit. The recent revelation I've had is uh, with my injury that I know is gonna help. Max recently took me to the gym for the first time and I lifted hitting some Bulgarian squats and some normal squats. Yeah, that's good, yeah. And with the weights, it's going to be even more stability focused. Something I've actually always struggled with in the past couple of years, especially, is ankle stability. So what you can see here, my first time trying to lift, when I'm going into the deeper position, my knees and my ankles just can't stabilize. They're like, oh, like, so it's like even hard for me to just stay straight. But hopefully some practice and we'll get there. I realize now that that's what I need. A lot of my friends and athletes have been telling me for years, Ed Scott being number one, that I need to lift. And now I, I back that, like I need to lift just to keep my body healthy and being able to take constant impact, um, I need it. And for any young athletes out there, don't think just because you're young and strong that you don't need to protect your body because you do. Good morning everyone, um, well done again for yesterday, it was awesome. Um, so today we're going to be moving on to the level two. So level two curriculum is more to do with the advanced skills, so they'll be introducing more acrobatics and harder level moves. So I saw you actually saving people with the spot, like you actually genuinely, if you hadn't have been there, someone could have fell. So the spot's very good. You could see everyone always, so you never had your back, you know, to anyone, which is good. Um, then you did the injury check, check that everyone's not injured, and then you, the people who were injured, you were able to modify the session to them being injured. One thing is you could have had a lower block, maybe for like, say you had a really young student. Obviously, none of us are young, but imagine you want to create something for everyone. Good progression, so you did bar hang, then you did upstart, and then all the way into lache, okay? So that's good, good progressions. One, two, three. Get low, jump to a speed step. Okay. Fun fact, I've actually never, for some reason, done a dive speed bolt. So, um, we're all learning out here. We're all learning out here. Yeah, it's true. I learned George didn't know how to do a dive speed bolt yeah. after I taught him one. Once again, it's not important to us that you master the skill. It's more that you understand the progression of the skill to implement into your students uh, to get them to eventually master that skill. Yes. 
Start went great, everyone was gassed. I learned so much as a coach that's gonna definitely benefit me in the future. So I'm sure all the students learned a lot. I've been doing parkour for like 13 years, but I've never done that trick. Some of the things I didn't even know how to do, but just through Robbie, I'm able to identify the key points. It just made it easy for me to understand it and then made it easy for me to then replicate that and teach it to new students. I'm just not turning them So the idea is if I'm here, it's that. See, that, oh, was, that was way it. better, way that better. Was a bit better yeah. So this is why it's great to come on the cert because I've actually never done a 360 inward roll. So Robbie's teaching me how to do it. So not only is the class learning, but I'm learning too. There it is. Yeah, yeah. It, is it, it is hard. It is hard. Yeah. It is hard. Yeah, it is hard. Why would you be a master of it? You've never done it. <laughs> that was less than five minutes. Yeah, but it's so it's actually really hard. That's that's how I want you to take these when you go up in the future. Like, no, I don't care if nobody gets all these moves today, as long as they understand where to start. It's also helped me with mentality, as I feel like me helping kids sometimes break them big mental barriers that reflects my own training and helps me then put them into practice when I'm facing a challenge that's hard. So that definitely helps. First of all, I want to say, well done. Everyone give themselves a round of applause. Yeah. Everyone give yourself a clap. Well done to everyone um, who took part. As me and Robbie told you in the feedback, everyone was safe and that's the main thing. So everyone was safe and the students would have also been safe in the lesson. Okay, everyone's explanation was really, really good. The main thing is the notes. Make sure you study the notes because then you can focus on the weak points that you have. Get them dirty, bro. <laughs> you need to frame it and put it on your wall. I think a big attribute to the whole thing was having uh, George here as the assistant. And with that, it's a real honor for me to be able to announce that George is approved to assistant master trainer for the yeah. WFPF. And he's in the WFPF family to help inspire and bring safe coaching of the sport to the masses. And um, yeah, Stoke. super Thank big day. Much. Yeah, yeah. Stoke. History. Without coaching, I wouldn't be here. And um, yeah, my parkour career wouldn't have been able to progress the way it did because the coaching kept me being able to train and kept me in the sport, kept me motivated, kept me passionate about the sport. Whereas without the coaching, I would have probably worked somewhere else and yeah, lost the passion and just got interested in different things. So I'm really grateful, yeah, um, for the coaching. To be able to make a living with parkour is just like beyond my wildest dreams. It's something that I never thought would be possible back in like studying in school and stuff, but now I'm just so extremely grateful to be surrounded with such positive people that can even allow that to happen. So I'm extremely grateful every single day. That was the shittest lazy vault ever done. Yeah. Yeah. You have to come. Yeah.
Big dream. dream. Thank you, you so much. Big yeah. dream, bro. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We told Thank all you your, so we told all <laughs> your fucking a beast. Yes. <laughs> dream, bro. <laughs> Luckily for me, I just stayed true to the style that I enjoyed, kept training, and then the opportunities came to me, just allowed me to open up and basically just focus on training. So that's completely changed the game for me and made things like a lot easier. And yeah, I'm just so, so, so grateful. And where do you want to be in like five years with the sport? In five years of parkour, I want to still be training. I want to have a healthy body. I still want to be doing stuff like this. I really want to still be working with WFPF, spreading the certification, and yeah, dude, just want to help the sport grow. That's the key for me. I just want to still be in the community and still helping things grow and pushing the sport forward. Pushing the sport forward.